One of the best ways to get better at drawing is to find people who are better than you and just watch them draw. When I was in art school, I went to the student gallery, found the best drawings and the best students, went to their classes and asked if I could just stand behind their easel and watch them draw. And I think I improved more as an artist with this exercise than any other practice regimen I came up with. So let's jump in. All right, so this first thing that you're seeing me do, this is one of the most important steps. I'm planning where I want the top of the head and the bottom of the chin, the sides of the head. This is basic compositional planning. It may sound over simple, but I can't tell you how many drawings. I love the way it looks, but it's positioned stupidly on the paper. So for that reason, I always start with compositional planning. Um, here, this is the most important part of the actual structural planning. It's all about using angles and finding distance to get the orientation of the head correct in relationship to the orientation of the neck and the orientation of the shoulders. I mean, look at this. With just a few angles, we can already see and feel the posture, the pose, and that's what's essential to the story of the subject, right? I think it's all about capturing story. And what I mean by that is, what is his energy? What is the nature of his pose, his mood? All of that is gonna come to life in capturing the angles correctly. I usually wouldn't jump into this much detail working the collar like this, but sometimes the clothing, the details in the clothing give us tons of information on the orientation of what's underneath. For example, the collar, the button, all that stuff tells us about the orientation of the clavicles, the sternum, all that stuff. With something like glasses, right? It's this uncomfortable combination of organic and geometric, right? I start with a basic rectangle and then I fit the organic curvature of the frames of the glasses within that rectangle. Getting the glasses to feel correct is all about planning the frames within a basic cube. Um, I'm sure you all have seen my videos talking about how everything, all drawing, comes down to your ability to be able to draw the sphere, the cylinder, and the cube correctly. Um, and glasses are no exception. Here with the mouth, I, I really do try to avoid thinking about the mouth using my left brain. The left brain tells us there's an upper lip, there's a lower lip. There's corners of the mouth. You gotta let all that go. Here you can see I am just focusing more on the shadow shapes around the mouth. If you can capture those shadow shapes correctly, not only the anatomy of the lips and the mouth will come out correctly, but also the expression will look natural and full of life. Many of my students ask me questions like, hey, what do you think of this method of portraiture? What do you think of the Loomis method, for example? Um, I think my method is a combination of all of my favorite methods combined. And actually, sometimes I'll look at a pose and think, I need this method more than I need that method. And that's the reason for learning lots of different methods. The biggest thing that I try to do is find the structure of the major volumes, right? The head, the neck, the shoulders. And once I build out the structure correctly, I focus on capturing the shadow shapes correctly. And with correct shadow shapes, the anatomy of the subject comes out, the expression of the subject, the life and the spirit of the subject come out. I used to teach the anatomy of the ear. I don't do it anymore because I think that that's engaging the left brain far too much. Now I just teach, if you wanna draw the ear correctly, find the shadow shapes. If you draw those shadow shapes accurately, you should be able to feel the cartilage of the ear folding in and out of itself naturally. So here I'm taking all the basic shadow shapes and I'm just giving it a very simple value treatment. If you've captured those shapes correctly, you should be able to keep the value patterns pretty simple and it will read three-dimensionally. And that's a good way to see if you have drawn your shadow shapes correctly. Shade them in with one simple value. Don't let yourself get sucked into the massive spectrum of values that you see. Just treat it with one simple value. If you've drawn the shadow shapes correctly, it'll read very volumetrically. Then you can move in and add nuances necessary. So at the end of the day, what portraiture method is most helpful? Well, I think it's far more simple than that. It's all about finding distance, and most importantly, it's all about finding angles. And if you wanna learn more about finding angles, check out this video. Uh, in this video, I explain everything you need to know in order to find angles and use them to bring your drawings to life. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments what you wanna see next and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Hope to see you on the next one. Peace.